we have a, a very special guest made his way up to our our big luxurious studio here, and that is uh, the great Paul O'Neill. I'll be doing the game with him tonight with David Cohen on Pixel 11. You're gonna have to put on the headphones to listen to Peter. He might he might ask you a question. I oh, know. is that right? Oh yeah. You never hey, know, you know, Paul. I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know that you listen to uh, the Joe Torre interview. I, I was you could listen to him for hours tell these stories, but you lived them. And we've had on Jorge this week. We've had on David Wells as well. I've talked to you a lot about it. You played on five championship teams in your life. Is that the best team ever, the 98 team? Oh, by far. I mean, there's, on paper, it was great, and everybody had a great year. So it just, uh, uh, in, in my mind, it was the closest to the perfect team that uh, I was ever part of. Did you know this in spring training? Did you know right away, or did you only know when you started to just steamroll? Yeah, you start to realize it when you start to steamroll because, uh, again, a lot of teams are really good on paper, and then, you know, injuries set in, and guys don't have the years they're supposed to have. But all of a sudden, this, uh, this season started, and then once we got going, uh, it was – I've never seen a team go into a city – looking to to win two out of three or three out of three i mean it's just like you would win two out of three and then you would expect to sweep and you would go on to the next series it, it was really an amazing thing now john flaherty i did the game with yesterday he, he told the story he said they came into a game and you guys were 11 and 1 against tampa bay mm -hmm. that year he said they'd come into the game pedal to the metal they take a lead and then they kind of coast for an inning or two and then if you thought about coming back they would just destroy <laughs> you did you feel that that's the way it played? Well, it, it, we were so good at, at, at with the ability to come out, get a lead. You had a bullpen, but you know, I, I don't think that we ever just uh, took an aim for granted. You, you come out, score a couple runs. I, I think we were a great team. It continued to, to tack on runs until uh, teams were kind of defeated, and uh, you'd start looking through tomorrow. Everybody has talked about that I've spoken to the one and four start. And, and although Joe said he wasn't sure, I mean, it seemed like his job was on the line, and then you guys had a meeting. And he said that you played a big role in the meeting. You got up and talked. What did you say? What was that meeting about? Well, I mean, we had had some issues with Seattle over the years, and uh, it, it just came about. I think I got drilled the night before, and nothing Andy happened. Moyer, right? Yeah, yeah, and nothing had happened, and it's just those things kind of really... Uh, you know, they mean more when you're you're going through tough times. I mean, if the team's going well, uh, you know, you just move on to the next day. But it was kind of a, a, a you know, kind of a wake up call. Um, obviously, to have a wake up call early in the season like that is strange. But uh, it seemed to bring things together. And uh, you know, if you look at one day that our season kind of turned around, that might have been it. And you know, Andy, I read a story in the Post today by Ken Davidoff, and Andy Pettit said. You know, the team was kind of mad at me because I didn't retaliate. You know, that's kind of maybe not Andy's way. And then Joe said it was an awkward meeting because I had to tell people, you've got to protect Paul. you got to protect players mm -hmm. that get hit. And what's been going on the last couple of days, how difficult is that to balance? All right, we've got to protect our guys, but you don't want to headhunt either. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely uh, a bigger part of the game uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it is much different today. Uh, Andy Pettit actually came up and apologized to me. But, you know, he was a, a close friend of mine, and I think you said it right. I, I, he wasn't comfortable pitching that way. Mm -hmm. um, also, it was very young then. He was young. And, you know, there are guys that use that. Uh, you know, Roger Clemens was a better pitcher when he used intimidation. Uh, it, it, it was a part of his game and um but you know what you you talk about it you you know about it it it, it happens in the game but uh, you know you hate to see uh, for instance you know what has happened to the yankees i mean they're a different team now aaron judge was hit by a pitch was it intentional no but it, you know it, it changed the way this team is and that's what you want to get away from when you're trying to uh, you know retaliate all right now let's just deviate a minute from the 98 team because i want to ask you what happened in miami where the kid from the, the acuna gets drilled I've always found it so weird, Paul. This is the one sport where somebody's doing well. Well, let's hit him yeah. instead of let's try to get him out. What were your thoughts when you saw what that, that the pitcher did? Yeah, I, I was never uh, a big fan of uh, of being hit because I'm doing well. Uh, because there are times where I'm doing bad that you know uh, that I can't walk out and punch the pitcher. You know, it's just <laughs> like, all right, so you're doing you're you're throwing a great game, Pedro. I'm going to come out and get you. You know, the, it, it's so one sided. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was there is a difference in trying to get somebody off the plate trying to let somebody realize hey you're not just going to single-handedly kill us but just to go out and smoke somebody for no reason it, it just uh you know you're paid to hit home runs you're paid to have good at bats and pitchers are paid to get you out get you out you know? yeah it, it's almost like i hate i hate the 
the aspect of anybody getting hit. But if, if, if I guess if a batter showed up a pitcher or styled, I, I guess maybe that there's some kind of thought, okay, maybe that's the only way he could get back at him. But because the kid keeps hitting home runs? Yeah, I, I mean, either you, you pitch around and you make better pitches uh, or, you know, you... you try to intimidate. I, I'm just not a big fan of, of intentionally hitting people because you see too many people get injured. And also, I mean, let's be honest, Paul. I know it's a sport. It's supposed to be fun, but it's a big business, and that baseball thrown 99 miles an hour is a deadly weapon if it gets away. If it gets up and in, yeah. And, you know, if you look at sports, uh, there is, there is. if you look at every sport, I mean, football, there's an intimidation factor. There's guys that, you know, that, that hit harder than other guys. Mm -hmm. Hockey, there's always a guy that will take care of somebody. Basketball, you know, there's the Bill Lambeers. There, that's part of the sport. But uh, to intentionally injure somebody, uh, and again, uh, there are guys now that throw so hard that, uh, you know, if you tell somebody to hit somebody in the hip, it, it might hit them in the side of the neck. And that's the, th the key is people aren't, pinpoint control anymore. John, with Paul O'Neill here on the Michael K Show, tomorrow the 98 team, the 20th anniversary of that great team, will be honored on the field. Uh, 125 and 50 was the final number after you won the 11 games in the postseason, but it was 114 during the regular season. And I was talking to Tori about this. In the middle of September, you guys just hit the skids. Mm -hmm. And I think on this date in 1998, you guys were on pace to win 121 games. It's hard to regret a team where you won a championship, but do you regret leaving those those wins in the middle of September? Well, I mean, not really, because the, the ultimate goal is to win the World Series. And, you know, that the World Series was won, so your accomplishment was there. But when you look back, if there was something to drive you towards a certain number or something, it, it might have been different. But again, you're, you're also looking for that postseason and trying to get everybody a perfect amount of playing time and that perfect amount of rest. And we weren't at a point where we were being chased by anybody. If we were a game up or a game back at that time with the same team at the with the same numbers we probably would have won a lot more games it's amazing when you look at that team there were guys on the bench that that knew what their role was and there were guys on the bench paul one of them went to the hall of fame mm -hmm. tim raines and mm -hmm. and chili davis was hurt a lot of the year and then when darrell got sick at the end chili davis kind of just plugged and played and was unbelievable i mean that was a perfectly constructed team and it was because those guys at that point of their career didn't have the ego that you know i should be out there this or that or and it just uh, it wasn't just the, the perfect fit on the field. It was the perfect fit in the clubhouse, too. I mean, there, there, there were people that were, uh, you know, intense, and there were people that, you know, joked, and there, it just you, you put the whole mix together, and it was kind of like the perfect storm. Now, there was one bit of sweat, I thought, in the postseason, and that was when you guys were down two games to one to the Indians. Did you feel it? And did you feel that the only way to validate 114 was to win it all? Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, if you do not win the World Series, then, you know, you had a good year, but you didn't you didn't win the World Series. And uh, that's the ultimate goal. Um, yeah, I do remember that game. And I think that 97 put the fear of losing and how quick it can happen uh, in everybody's mind. So I, I do remember that game and I remember it well. And I remember doing an interview with you and then we wrote it all the way out. So, uh, uh you know, not that I'm superstitious, but it uh, it it definitely was uh, the the game that Duque pitched in Cleveland was kind of that do or die time. Now, just to amplify what Paul's talking, you know, Paul has become a great broadcaster. I don't think at that point he ever thought he was going to be in the media. Did not like doing interviews, and we did an interview before Game Four, and they won. And then Paul, ever, uh, I did an interview for the, uh, I was a radio broadcaster mm -hmm. then. And I did a mm -hmm. free game interview every game. And he sought me out every single game. And you guys Let's didn't... go. Let's get this over yeah, with. Yeah. And the funny part was, that, so they won every single game after 2-1. And then it's 3-0 against San Diego. Game four is happening. And I can't find you. And then I I, I was going to interview somebody else. And I went up to you. I said, you want to do this? And you went, oh, okay. I mean, you just knew that you had to. Right. So I, I was a big part of this. You know, it's a true story. Yeah. I mean, you, you were you the good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> it was your interview. It wasn't for your looks, brother. That's true. <laughs> well, that is a fact. I was going to ask you, Paul, how did how did the 98 team think of Michael K? Do they care for him very much? 
<laughs> you know, believe it or not, players, uh, uh, you know, I, there's not a lot said about Michael that uh, that's bad. I, I, I got to give you that. There's there's a lot of joking. Right. You, you know, you, head, you, yeah. got, well, you got thick skin. You can take it. Yeah. But, you thick know, skin, you, you've head, been around yeah. the, cl the club enough that uh, they feel comfortable enough to, to jab you a little bit. Um, of all your championships, the one with the Reds, the four with the Yankees, is that the one that's the most special because it's historic? Or is it like picking a favorite child? Uh, you know, every single one of them has a different story. But, you know, and looking back now, being th that was the best team, uh, yeah, that that's probably as special as any of them, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, the one with the Mets, obviously, because it was New York, in New York, was really special to me. But uh, to look back, and if you picked one, you would pick that one because you think you could take that team and repeat with it because mm -hmm. it was that good. It's so funny. Uh, everybody takes ownership of the team that they were on. We had Willie Randolph on yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said, I think the 77, 78 Yankees were better. We've had Strawberry on, and he played for the 86 Mets and the, and the 98 Yankees, and he said the, the 86 Mets would have beaten them. Wow. But, I mean, you were on that team, and I've never seen a better team in 32 years of, of covering sports. Well, I was on the 90 Reds, and we were we had a good bullpen, but the, we weren't better than the 98 Yankees, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. I just, like I said, it's just in that time, it was like that one time, that one instant that where everybody played well. And you stayed away from injuries. Other, I think Mariano started the season on the DL, but, you know, he had a, a fabulous year as usual. But... Seldom do you have that many good players have great years, and that's just what made that year special. I mean, Wells had a great year. Yeah. Uh, Duque, when he came up, mm -hmm. Coney had a great You had a great, I think, at 317. Yeah, it was just, like I said, I mean, was, you, you go up and down the lineup, and everybody on the back of their cards had good years. All right, now, what was more pressure, though? Because I remember you saying, you told me, in 2000, you had to win the series against the Mets. There was no joy there. But in 98, you almost had to win that one to validate 114. So where did you feel more pressure? Well, I think that, again, every year brings on its own special thing. Uh, I think we felt pressure uh, in game one because we were losing. Uh, you know, and you, you always want to get off to a good start. And Kevin Brown was pitching. They, they pulled him out. We ended up winning. Once you saw that series turn after game one, you almost figured what was going to happen. We, we kind of steamrolled after that. But, you know, you get to 2000, and again, you're, you're losing game one, and you're just like there's so much. You really have everything to lose and nothing to gain. We're supposed to win. We are the Yankees. Mr. Steinbrenner expects us to win. But I, in my mind, I truly felt like we were a better team. And not always in short series do the best team win, but, you know, when you feel like you're a better team, chances are you're going to win. Now, you know fans are going to be pumped up to see this team on the field again. I wonder, is it just a fan thing? Or are you excited to see your teammates? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, there'll be somebody you're like, wow, I forgot he was on the 98 team. And, but the, yeah, there'll be stories, and uh, immediately it brings back all the memories of... Uh, and that's what we got left, Michael. I mean, it's not like you can go out and do it anymore. So you, you have great memories, um, and that's what you live for. Like I said, you had that one moment, and uh, that mo one moment as that group where it, it all came together. And it just uh, the people in New York are so good at not forgetting and not getting rid of championships. And I can almost imagine, I mean, there's a roster of 25, and there are guys that come and go. So maybe about this 31, 32 guys. That's what you guys have in common, mm -hmm. and nobody could ever take that. They can't take that title away from you. Yeah, that's uh, the one cool thing about finishing off with a World Series is, uh, you know, it, it, you can't take it away. And, and that's the thing now where, you know, is Boston the greatest team you've seen or the Yankees earlier in the year? Until this season is over and until you see who wins the World Series, you can't even compare any of the current teams to the teams that have won in the past. All right, now let's shift it to, the, to this year, or this this team right now. We're doing the game together with, with Coney, so obviously you've been watching these games. And then we also did a lot of the games when they were 17-2, mm -hmm. and we looked at each other, wow, what's different, Paul? I mean, this team just... I can't say they look lackluster because when you don't score, you always look yeah. lackluster. What's going on in your opinion? Well, I think that your true team leader is out of the lineup right now. I think Aaron Judge, uh, everybody walks kind of a straight line, and he doesn't have to say anything, but he being part of the lineup is a huge part. I, I think that Sanchez, obviously, he's one of those guys that's a good player that's not having a good year. Uh, the pitching numbers have been not really good as of late, and um, to me... 
you get to the playoffs, it's a different season. Now you win the wild card, you're in the same boat, and then the pressure goes to Boston. Can right. they validate their season? But, uh, you know, you, 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 you can't judge a team when they're – I've always said and always heard, you know, you're never as good as they say you are. You're really never as bad. And right now they don't look good. But, you know, if the playoffs started tomorrow and everybody was healthy and Judge was back in the lineup, I still think that this team has an opportunity to win. The, the, the added danger, though, is that you, you put yourself in a one-game situation. A starter has a bad game and your season's over. They could win 101 games and go home after one day. Yeah, but, you you know, you don't look at it that way. You look at it as a postseason. And uh, there are times, whether it's in a short series or one-game series, you have must-wins. And... Obviously, going into that, that one-game thing is a must-win. But it, it also gives you confidence going into the next round that you're, you're on your way. Now, you say you, know, you have the title, you, you don't play anymore, so you can't do it again. But I know Gene Michael tried to pull you out of retirement. They need outfielders right now, Paul. Can you give them a couple <laughs> of games? I can't see anymore, man. <laughs> I might be able to run or sway. I just can't see. Can't, so even classes <laughs> wouldn't help. No, huh? no. Well, I know you got to get upstairs and prepare, so I'll let you go. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate All right, it. man. All right. Another three and a half hours with you later, I man. know. Well, well David smokes. will be a buffer.